public hearing. Anyone other than the applicant or the representative wishing to speak must register and submit their registration slip to the zoning administrator at this time. Following the public hearing, the board will conduct its monthly business meeting, at which time we will vote on the applications. You may stay for the meeting and hear how the applications are decided, or you may leave following the hearing. The applicant and town board will be sent a copy of tonight's decision. Any other person wishing to receive a copy of a decision can sign the sheet on the table at the front of the room. Those of you wishing immediate knowledge of the outcome of these proceedings may call the county zoning office tomorrow morning. The procedure we will follow for hearing each application tonight is, after each application is read, the applicant, their agent, or representative will have the opportunity to, to present their application followed by any questions or comments from the board. Then all correspondence will be read. Then others in favor will have a chance to speak. Anyone objecting will then have a chance to speak. I will then ask for a summary of the board's field observations and any staff comments. Finally, the applicant will be allowed a chance for a brief rebuttal if they wish. Anyone wishing to speak should use the microphone, state their name, and direct their comments to the board. I ask that all testimony be kept brief and to the point. If you are testifying as a nearby landowner, please tell us where your property is located relative to the subject property. Tonight's hearing will be recorded, and the recordings will become part of the record. Comments that are based on hearsay or secondhand information, as well as slanderous or prejudicial remarks, will be ruled out of order. The board has looked at all the properties, and a record will reflect these observations. <clears throat> Excuse me. Any person affected by an administrative decision of this board has 30 days from the filing of tonight's decision to make an appeal. Such appeals shall be heard by the Washoe County Circuit Court. Information is available from the clerk of court's office and unqualified legal counsel. The county assumes no liability and makes no warranty as to the legality of any construction commenced prior to the expiration of this 30-day period. I will now introduce the board on the end is Larry, Bob, John, John, Rick, our recorder, Amy, our assistant uh, athletic director, and I'm Kevin Fitzgerald. <laughs> athletic director? <laughs> she's, the, she's the boss. <laughs> I was told to say assistant. So you call me the athletic director. Oh, is that what I said? I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> well. I know, it's hard to. Sorry. First day, first day on the job. <laughs> okay, tonight's first application. PLCL LLC Oshkosh, Wisconsin have made an application for variance in accordance to sections 58-542 sub C sub 2 of the Oshera County Zoning Code to construct uh, 82 by 30 two-story single-family dwelling with a walkout basement coming to within 12 feet of the northerly side lot line, 15-foot setback required in the RS-20 single-family residential zone within the shoreland area. Location, a parcel of land known as Lot 1 of Certified Survey Map number 2183 of Section 29, T19N, R11E, Town of Mount Morris, Porter's Lake, and 3243 Shanahan Lane. Will the applicant or who's going to speak for the variance tonight? Please state your name. Uh, Larry Keller. And Larry, would you tell us a little bit what you want to do over there? So we plan on ripping it out, putting a zero clearance house in there, um, designing it around the septic field, drain field, septic tank, making uh, great improvements on the side setback. But to, uh, to access around the drain field, we're asking for that side Okay, I got a few questions for you. <clears throat> Has there been a recent survey? What was that? Has there been a recent survey? Yeah, the pins were in there and clearly marked. Um, if you did, if you were out there on the onsite, I pulled the property line. 
find strings down the property lines. Yeah. Existing pipes, I, I guess I don't know exactly when the last survey was. In our packet is, uh, says certified survey map. I think it's dated 5 Would that be probably be the latest one? Okay, so you're sure the lot lines? Yeah, the irons were staked by the road, down by the lake, um, ran a string. There was uh, actually that survey map that has all those pins and we pulled measurements off the neighboring property and to find those pins um, where, the, where the three are on one corner and they all measured, checked right out. Pull the string down that line. Okay. Have they talked to the neighbors in town about this? The neighbors in uh, around the, the property? Yes, the joining neighbors? The homeowner has talked to them about that. Okay. The town, town board? Um, Danny Novak, yes. What type of foundation will this home be on? Uh, poured concrete. How far above the exis existing grade will the first floor elevation be and how much filling and grading will be done? Um, well, we're, we're sliding it back into the hill to, so it'll be kind of, it will be zero clearance on that. The, as as the, the slope of the land goes down towards the lake, there'll be more sticking out of the ground on the side of the walkout, which would be probably wood frame, depending on the elevations in the grade. So as the concrete steps down with the slope of the land. So meaning that the only filling would be maybe up at the top or the garage entrance a little bit. Um, but being a zero clearance, we're keeping that floor lower than, than a normal home where you would set the floor deck on top of the concrete wall. What's the finished height of the building? On the lake side? On the lake side. It would be 12, 9 foot, 18 foot. Probably about 24 feet. Is there any, and in the back? It, it would be less? On the garage side? Yeah, say the garage side first. That, that's 24 feet? No, that would be nine, seven. Um, Sixteen, 16 to 17 feet to okay. the peak. And the lake side is 24, you said you thought, or somewhere around there? Somewhere between 24 okay. and 27. How are you going to deal with the runoff, erosion, stormwater runoff? Well, the, uh, the gutter system, um, I guess if when pulling permitting, if need be, we could, we could have a dry well up on the top side if that's what it takes to direct some of the water um, with, the, with the eaves gutters. Would that be near your septic field? Is on the, the north the north line, the drain fields at the top. So I mean, you could you could find spots to direct it away from that. But you're gonna have a driveway too. Are there any other improvements planned for the property? Well, improving the side setbacks. Well, the well house is going to be gone. So we, there will be a new well um, put in okay. 50 feet, 50 feet plus from the drain field. Pretty close to where the existing well is. Will all the other setbacks be met? Yes, and then some. We, we have a little bit of room on the opposing side of the 12 foot side. Especially if we move it back, because the, the line runs at a slight angle, um, and we 
clearly are farther from the lake than we have. Yep, we saw that. What can you tell me about the septic system? Um, it's a concrete tank. Um, there's three lines. Um, it, lo it looked like a fairly new system. I had Lear plumbing out there looking at it um, just to try to figure out options um, during, the, during the build and the dig. It's big enough for to take care of the new house? Yes. Okay. Have they thought about removing any non-conforming structures? Well, the one shed, the house in the shed and the well house will be gone. About the one on the lake? I guess if, uh, if, uh, if you guys thought it needed to go, it, that, could, that could go. We could reconstruct 180 square foot up to boat house on the on the lake shore in, in the view corridor. Have it, they considered any options besides what they asked for in the variance? You know, not, um, I guess not, not really any other options other than trying to figure out a design around this septic system in this lot. What are the hardships? Well, a, a narrow lot and the, uh, the septic system, drain field in place where, where it is. How wide is the lot where they want to build the house? And some change to uh, to uh, fifty seven. Yeah, it's it's around right around fifty seven feet wide. It's sixty four at the back. Hmm. Here, sixty four. <coughs> that drops that way at the back. Sixty four on the road side. Yeah. Saying? Where the entrance is, and then that little jog, and then it widens out. That's 64 feet, but it doesn't. In front of the septic. Line goes there, yeah. don't it? Oh, what did you go there? Oh, okay. You know where the finger is that comes out to the road there? On the, on the survey I have, it says 49.37, and then a 14.82 where it jogs back out, about 64. So we're not sure how wide it is exactly where the house is going to be built. <coughs> Fifty-seven point eight up up towards the between the pins up by the lake shore. Um, I believe Kyle and Trent, or Trent Nelson. When he laid this in there, he, he gave me the dimensions of about 57 feet. When when putting the when putting the the, the lakeside right corner on the line, it gave us 16.4 feet on the opposite side at the near closest spot to the line. So anywhere from 16.4 <coughs> to like 17.4 is what we had on that side, paralleling the 12 foot side. So if it was 60 foot wide, you wouldn't need a variance, right? But my, what I'm saying is our paperwork doesn't show how wide it is where the building is going to go. We're guessing because of the lake and the, the, the back part. Well, it's not 60 feet wide. No. I mean, oh. it's 50. It's I understand 57 that. 57 point something. Um, when Kyle 
or when, sorry, Trent Nelson laid this out with his GPS. Nelson was his phone answer. It was 16.4 and 17 point at the corner of the house and, and the, that side that runs mm -hmm. on the, the side we're asking would be 12 foot. And that would give me a little bit of leniency if I could go 12 and a half or 13 feet, I could still keep meet the setback on the opposite side. Okay. We know about the property limitations. It's a narrow old lot, right? <coughs> um, if this was granted, do you know what permits you'd have to pull? Yep. And what, when are you talking about building? Um, this digging it this fall. Okay, I have an additional question. The driveway along on the south side, on the 15 foot wide side, is that where it's going? Yep. Is that gonna infringe on the neighbor at the winter with snow plowing or any other access to the in, get a car into the garage? No, I think um, the snow removal, you could push back out to on the on the road side of the septic system. Um, as far as the neighbor's driveway and property in that sp specific area where it gets a, a, a closer to the line is really vacant ground with a couple trees there, so. You have to remove that one oak tree there, right? For the driveway? Yeah. I don't have anything else. Anybody else? I think you covered it. I have nothing, Kevin. <coughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Correspondence. We have no correspondence. Anyone in favor to speak? No one in favor or register in opposition. No objections. Anyone to speak for information only? No. Staff comments. The applicant is requesting a variance to construct an 82 by 30 two-story single family dwelling with a walkout basement coming to within 12 feet of the northerly side lot line in the RS-20 <coughs> zone. The subject property is a redivision of lots two and three of Shanahan Resort subdivision located in the southwest corner of Porter's Lake. While the original home predates county zoning and very little plans are on record, the property has received a couple of land use permits for various improvements through the years and has a newer septic system installed in 2012. The existing home is an older one-story bungalow which is centrally located on the lot. However, the corners maintain a minimum side yard setback of six to seven feet as noted, as noted on recent on-sites. The board has visited the property and noted a non-conforming shed near the shoreline situated too close to the side lot line and an additional older shed near the existing cabin that is earmarked to be removed due to replacement of the proposed dwelling. It was also noted that the existing well and septic locations restrict the building area and that the proposed plan will make a bad situation better. Staff has reviewed the request and feels the home Home's narrow design and parallel placement to the lot line is going to significantly improve the existing setbacks. The proposed variance should not negatively impact adjoining properties and is consistent with similar variances recently granted. While the board will be making a formal recommendation on this request later in the evening, staff recommends approval of the variance to construct an 82 by 30 two-story single family dwelling with a walkout basement coming to within 12 feet of the northerly side lot line, 15 foot setback required in the RS-20 zone within the Charlotte area in the town of Mount Morris. <coughs> Anything you wanna add? Any questions by the board? I don't have oh, them. Good? None. Okay. We're gonna go to our second one. Gary and Annetta Barzak, West Ellis, Wisconsin, have made an application for variance in accordance to sections 58-452 sub C sub two. 
of the Washera County Zoning Code to construct a 44 by 26 single family dwelling with full basement coming to within 6.58 feet of the southern side lot line and 15 feet of the northerly lot line. A 20 foot setback required in the AG General Agricultural Zone within the shoreland area. A parcel of land known as part of government lot one being part of the SW one quarter of the SW one quarter of section 28 T20N R11E Town of Springwater Silver Lake. Address W fire number W6422 County Road H. Will the applicant please come forward? Oh. <laughs> Two. A <laughs> busy man. <laughs> Which one's going first? Why don't you tell us a little bit there about so, it? Um, yeah, this is another situation, a narrow lot. We're making side uh, improvements, which considering how narrow the lot is, um, great improvements. We're uh, uh, cutting it back by about 55 inches in width. Um, trying to design a modest home really not doing anything drastic um, getting rid of an old structure and putting a new one in. it's almost on the same place right yeah. okay I got some same questions I'll do it again 17 feet survey from the ground yeah <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> what uh, what's the survey date on this one do you know just done um, we're going to have a new survey. Um, they, they surveyed both lots uh, on both side on either side, so they were able to um, put the, put the map of the lot together based off of that, off the two surveys. Yeah, right. Trent, Trent's in the process. I got one from July 16, 2019. That's pretty well, pretty that, reasonable, that huh? Yeah. <laughs> See, Kyle took all my notes, so I. Okay. So we're sure the lot lines, right? Okay. Have they talked to the neighbors in town about this? The lot lines, you know, yep. right? You know, you talked to the neighbors in town about this? Yes. What type of foundation will this be? This will be a concrete poured, poured wall. Basement. Crawl space basement. Basement. Okay. How far above the existing grade will the first floor be? Nine foot, probably from the ground to the top of the wall, and another, uh, you know, nine to ten feet, and seven feet to the peak. So about seventeen feet. Didn't appear to be any grading needed. Okay. And the finished height will be. Seventeen feet. You deal with erosion and stormwater. How? Other improvements planned? Anything besides that building? Besides the other place. other ones are staying, right? The garage is staying. Yeah. Nothing else. Yeah. And all the other setbacks will be met. Will be met. You'll be far enough away from the road and everything. Yeah. Okay. What about the septic system there? That was. Uh, that's a. Let's see what I let's see what I have here. Looks like 04. So that was good for that. It's about the same size, right? Yeah. Okay. 
I don't think we had any non-conforming structures out there at that yeah. one, did we? No. Have they considered any other options? No, I mean, we're pretty much trying to build an efficient, modest home in pretty much the same footprint, but making some improvements on the size. Yeah. What's the hardship here? Permits, you'll seem to know what you'll need, right? When would you build this one? <laughs> um, the plan is to get the foundation in this fall and build them through the winter. Okay. Frame them. Well, finish them. By Fellow committeemen, any questions? <laughs> just go just ahead. one, it has nothing to do with says, people present, are you Brian Inda? No. No. Just Joe. Oh, okay. That was an old on site. Oh, all right. It doesn't mean anything. I was just oh. curious. Thanks, Larry. Correspondence? We have no correspondence. Favor to speak? No one in favor, no one in opposition, no one for information only. Staff comments. The applicants are requesting a variance to construct a 44 by 26 single family dwelling with full basement coming to within 6.58 feet of the southern side lot line and to within 15 feet of the northerly side lot line in the AG zone within the Shoreland area, town of Springwater. The subject property and home are part of an older subdivision that predates county zoning and county permitting, so very little records exist. The surrounding area is marred with numerous zoning districts ranging from RS10, RS20, RSP, AG, CG, and CS. Lot widths range from a low of 38 feet to well over 150 feet. The problem, however, is that side yard setbacks are 20 feet in the AG zone versus only 15 feet in the RS20 zone. The board has visited the property and noted that there are no other non-conforming structures in addition to the existing dwelling. The narrow lot width and 20-foot side, side lot setbacks leave little buildable area. They also noted that the proposed plan is to replace the dwelling in basically the same location minus the small bump outs on each side of the existing dwelling. The applicants cite the narrowness of the lot as not only an unnecessary hardship, which would only allow for a seven and a half foot wide home, but also as a unique property limitation. Staff has reviewed this request and does not believe the proposed reduction in side yard setbacks will negatively impact surrounding land uses. The southerly most side yard will essentially be the same as that of the existing due to the existing bump out while the northerly side yard will be increased from 10 feet to now 15 feet. It should be noted that the new home is also being constructed around an existing wellhead. While the board will be making a formal recommendation on this request later in the evening, staff recommends approval of the variance to construct a 44 by 26 single family dwelling with full basement coming to within 6.58 feet of the southerly side yard lot line and 15 feet of the northerly side yard lot line, 20 foot setback required in the AG general egg zone within the Shoreland area in the town of Springwater. And that's all I have. And I think he testified that there will not be an existing well head there, right? Well, there is an existing well head there that was part of the reason for the construction. But, they, but they're going to remove that and put a new well in, he said, right? No, that was no. the other variance. Oh, that's that right. was the I'm other variance. I'm sorry. All right. Anything else? You're testing me, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Larry, anything else? Sure. It's your last chance. Okay. Unless you have another one. <laughs> Are you staying for the Good. next hearings too? <laughs> okay, we're going to adjourn and go into the uh, little room over here and have our business meeting. And uh, you're welcome to attend those that are concerned about the last two that we heard.
All right, I'm going to call the <coughs> meeting of the Washer County Planning and Zoning Committee to order. Uh, this meeting is going to be conducted in the same manner as the applications heard by the Board of Adjustment. Uh, please remember to keep your comments brief and relative to the matter at hand. Anyone other than the applicant or their representative wishing to speak at the hearing must have registered. Anyone who has not should do so immediately and submit the registration slip to the zoning assistant zoning administrator. Mm -hmm. Correct? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the committee has looked at all the properties and will record, uh, and the record will reflect these observations. Following uh, this part of the public hearing, the committee will conduct their monthly business meeting, at which time we'll vote on the applications. You may state and hear how the applications are decided, or you may leave following the public hearing. Any person affected by an administrative decision of this committee has 10 days from the filing of tonight's decision to file an appeal. Such appeals are heard by the Washer County Board of Adjustment. Uh, information and applications are available uh, from the county zoning office. The county assumes no liability and makes no warranty as to the legality of any construction commenced prior to the expiration of this 10-day period. Uh, now I'm going to introduce the committee. Down on the end, we have Carl Grizar. Uh, then we have Pat King. We have Mike Cap, Jerry Lower, our secretary, Cindy Rettler, Assistant Zoning Director, Amy Schultz, and I'm George Peterman. So the first item we have tonight is uh, Alex uh, Muth. Okay. Uh, Alex Muth from Campbellsport, Wisconsin, has made an application for a conditional use in accordance with sections 58236, parent 17, and 58. 454, parent 27 of the Washer County Zoning Code to store 2018 Avenger 24 foot tra travel trailer in the AG General Agri Agricultural Zone uh, location, a 38 acre parcel of land known as Lot 2 of a certified survey map number 6466, being part of the northwest quarter of the northwest quarter of section 35, uh, T 18N R 11E, Town of Marion County Road Z. Um, if you could just state your name, let us know what you'd like to do with this application. Alex Smith. If you could speak up. It's Alex Smith. Yeah, there you go. Just like to store the travel trail out there permanently and for camping purposes, come up on the weekends, stuff like that. All right. Um, and uh, and you're, you're the owner of the land, correct? Correct. Okay. And you also own the trailer? I don't currently own the trailer yet. It's a, a like model. That I was looking, that I would like to buy. Okay. So you, you haven't I bought a trailer yet. I haven't bought a trailer. Okay. okay. Um, and then we were up there yesterday when we uh, uh, did the site visit, and um, I noted that there was a portable restroom already up there. Um, and one thing that I get concerned about with travel trailer um, uh, requests is uh, water waste. You know. 
Um, so the portable restroom is going to stay up there full time. Uh, you don't have plans on removing that? No. Okay. That, that, that's all right. I mean, I was just asking a question. So, um, and uh, and so and that's where you would take care of uh, uh, obviously any sort of bathroom duties. But what about other water uh, waste like sink, shower, uh, doing dishes, that sort of thing? Uh, do you have a plan to dispose of that wastewater up there? Okay. It, it, the concern being that it would just be dumped out on the land, I guess, and we don't want that, obviously. So we'd want some sort of uh, uh, plan or idea of what you would do with that Thanks. water. Water in the set up. Water bottle. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions for Alex? Um, I noticed the driveway that we came in on, that's not your property, correct? And are you planning on putting a gravel driveway somewhere else, or? Yeah. Um, yeah, I got it go through the highway department. Um, I was inquiring that. Is, is it going to run the same direction as where we came in just down further is that i didn't supposed to be it's going to be down further because of the hill and then i would just meander up okay and you plan to put that in before you put the trailer in i assume or um or not i wasn't planning on it because i currently have permission to use the other lane okay I guess my only concern was like if there was a, if, you're, if there um, ambulance was called or something, it might be difficult to get down that that road that we went on. So, but yeah. So that's the only question I have. Does anybody else have any other questions for Alex? Yeah, and I guess to follow up with uh, Pat's concern, you know, the access that that you have currently uh, where it's located. Uh, Visibility is a little bit, you know, suspect there, um, you know, because it's right at the crest of a hill, if I remember correctly. And we actually sort of drove past the, the driveway the first time. We didn't quite get to it the, 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 the on, uh, uh, on the spot that we needed. So we had to back up and it was, you know, we, we had to keep a good eye out as we were backing up because we weren't sure that someone would see us if they were coming over to crest that hill. Yeah, I don't like that. So That's why I put, started to put the, get the permit for the driveway. Right. Do you have a, a, do you have a time frame in which y that driveway would be uh, constructed, put in? Start getting the ball rolling fairly soon. Okay. I think the night permit said something about uh, estimated completion was in September. All right. Perfect. <coughs> okay. Any other questions? No? Okay, you can have a seat. I just, right. I, just <coughs> I just wanted to mention, just for your own information, Alex, if you were to put um, a, a do a well out there, um, if you if you you can't connect the running water to the trailer unless you would actually have a septic system there. So you're okay to have running water out there and um, and have like a spigot or something there and a hose and for your water. But once you actually connect it to the trailer and you were to you know if you were going to use the toilet or the shower facilities in there, then you would have to actually have your system. You would have to actually be connected to a system or actually capture that water in a different manner than just you know dumping it into that porta potty because then you would be it would be that you actually had running water you know in the trailer so then you'd have to have if you actually had you know a hose and you actually connected the trailer to running water right. you'd have to look at something a little bit more permanent yeah. and and yeah and, and I wasn't really thinking not to confuse things even more uh, about a, a, a running water or anything like that but a lot of those have like a, a fresh water tank where you could just sort of pull the thing off site mm -hmm. fill the fresh water tank bring it back up and then people use it for their dishes stuff yeah. like that and, uh, but yeah, if you, you were to uh, put in running water, then mm -hmm. changes the dynamic a little. Yeah. So, okay. All right. So, do we have any correspondence? Uh, no correspondence. Anyone speaking in favor? No one in favor. Anyone against? No one against. Okay. And no one for information. information. All right. Staff comments. 
The applicant is requesting a conditional use to store a 2018, but now we now we understand it's not a 2018. He's looking at similar units. So um, a Avenger 24 travel trailer on a 30-acre parcel of land in the AG zone in the town of Marion. The subject property is a division of egg land that was subdivided into two lots in 2017 along the east side of County Highway Z. The lot is an L-shaped parcel with the majority of the lot tucked behind an old farmstead and comprises of over 30 acres. The property is primarily vacant with a tree line over 600 feet back from County Highway Z. The committee visited the property and noted that the area is a good distance from the county highway and the unit will not be visible from the neighboring residents. There was a portable toilet on the property. Staff has reviewed this request and believes that storage of the proposed travel trailer on this property in the location, location shown on the proposed site plan behind the existing tree line should not negatively impact the surrounding land uses. While the committee will be making a formal recommendation on the request later in the evening, staff recommends approval of the conditional use request to store, again, not really a 2018 Avenger trailer, but a similar unit on a 30-acre parcel of land in the, in the AG zone in the town of Marion. Okay. And then, um, Alex, do you have any follow-up at all? You're okay? All right. Perfect. All right, then we're going to move on to the second application, which is the Evergreen Center Incorporated out of Almond, Wisconsin. Uh, they have made application for a conditional use in accordance with sections 58236, parent B, parent 2, and 58364, parent 4, and 58364, parent 8 of the Washera County Zoning Code to establish a Christian Camp Retreat Center, Evergreen Center, uh, utilizing the existing conference center and two prayer cabins, and proposed construction of a 58 by foot by 51 foot single family dwelling with a 26 foot by 26 foot attached garage for staff housing uh, in the OP Parks and Recreation Zone. Uh, the location is three parcels together being approximately 105.27 acres uh, being the southwest quarter of the northwest quarter and the southeast quarter of, of the northeast quarter sections uh, 5 and 6, uh, T20N, R10E, Town of Rose, N7101, 14th Court. All right, and if you guys would like to come forward. All right, and if you could just state your name and just uh, sort of inform us what you'd like to do with this application. My name is Daniel Dake. I'm the president of Evergreen Center, and what we'd like to do with this application is see it approved. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what, what are your plans for the property and, and, and the reasoning behind the application? Okay, we're uh, in the process of working towards building this uh, house on the property for uh, staff and we're short room for staff right now and interns that stay on the property. And uh, <coughs> hopefully, as we grow, we will build more houses, possibly up to four. All right. and would you like to add anything? Or? Well, you said exactly what I was gonna say. Okay, very good. All right, do we have any uh, questions from the committee? I'll ask the same kind of the same question. I we went and saw the site, and uh, you had suggested that you were going to put in a um, more appropriate roadway to the ho house. Um, are you? Uh, I'm assuming you're going to put in a gravel road, regardless, before you build start construction. Obviously, back. Do a 15 inch base. Okay. Three okay. Three from the center out. Be six wide. It should be. The Okay. I don't know that we will we'll have that road in before the construction starts. Right. Okay. But okay. But it well, once it's in. constructed, yeah. Right. Okay. That, that was my only question because I know that, again, it would be difficult for an uh, emergency vehicle to get back there because it, it was questionable. 
riding that van if we were going to make it back there. So, <laughs> so that was my only concern. We have had uh, the people that own the property on the back side of us. They've had logging trucks and they logged their property and they came through that very area. And they're planning on doing it again, either sometime this winter. Um, they've asked us if they could cross our property to get to their property. So, yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Um, where you had the flag set, I know you are saying that you might move it back a little bit further or and one way or the right. other. Um, so are you going to have setbacks since you're going to go with county statutes on the roadway? Are you going to have setbacks with this? Yes. Same thing? Yes, we are. We don't want to be doing this all over again. <laughs> I have a question. <clears throat> have you got the necessary easement agreements between the two, between yourself and the, and the logging company, the other property owner? The one that's doing the logging, yes, we have an agreement with them. And is that what you mean? Right, yeah, because I, I would hate to see that property tore up because if it gets, if we have a, a wet fall right. or a wet winter, it, that, that, that easement will be, will be somewhat destroyed. And that's, that's the thing that you gotta be, look out for. Right, right. Yeah, when they did it the first time, um, when they finished their logging, they went over the whole thing and. Okay. <coughs> Anyone else? I, I yeah, I think it's worth noting, and, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, I believe the um, uh, there's a, a there's a grand scale project here um, that, that that you have proposed other buildings, but right now we're just sort of uh, looking at uh, getting this zone correctly and you know for the conditional use in the one building right now but there are other buildings that are coming down the road correct but without a time frame just future expansions right um when we talked to todd he indicated to us that this meeting would help us um, not have to go through this again for other mm -hmm. buildings. Right. Correct. Yeah, and we talked Correct. about that okay. yesterday. I just, a, a lot of this obviously is being recorded and everything, so I just right. want to make sure that uh, we're, we're getting a full scope of, of your, you know, okay. what, what's happening now and then that there's a future final vision that includes more buildings. Right, um, it and, does. And uh, um, additional homes for staff yes. and things like that. Mm -hmm. That's right. All right. Okay. Uh, unless there's any other questions, you can have a seat then. Thank you. Yep. All right. And is there any correspondence? No correspondence. Anyone speak in favor? No one in favor. Against? No. Nope. Information? No information. All right. Staff comments. The applicant is requesting a conditional use to establish a Christian camp retreat center utilizing an existing conference center and two prayer cabinet cab cabins and proposed construction of a 58 by 51 single family dwelling with a 26 by 26 attached garage for staff housing in the OP park and recreation zone in the town of Rose. The subject property is comprised of three parcels totaling over 105 acres and it was previously used as the Wisconsin Division of Labor Campus. While the property is adequately zoned OP park and recreation it should be noted that the original campus predates county zoning and as such never maintained conditional use approvals. Retreat centers and camps are now a listed conditional use in that zone. Evergreen Center purchased the property in late 2006 and has since made significant renovations to the main conference center retreat hall and has constructed several small retreat cabins on the property. This has been permitted as limited improvements to the non-conforming use. The applicant is now requesting to expand the camp even more with a new single family residence for staff housing, a future all season building, additional staff housing and youth retreat lodges. 
Therefore, it is the appropriate time to obtain the conditional use permit for the existing center, bringing it into conformance with the proper zoning so that future construction can occur through obtaining just land use and building permits. The committee has visited the property and noted the building site is well suited for construction of a single family home and the expansion plan as a whole will not negatively impact surrounding land uses. The applicant indicated additional traffic will be handled with well constructed access roads and ample parking is provided alleviate, alleviating safety concerns. Staff has reviewed this request and believes the use is compatible with the town comprehensive plan as well as the county zoning codes. While the committee will be making a formal recommendation on this request later this evening, staff recommends approval of the conditional use request to establish a Christian Camp Retreat Center, Evergreen Center, utilizing an existing conference center and two prayer cabins and proposed construction of a 58 by 51 single family dwelling with a 26 by 26 attached garage for staff housing in the OP zone in the town of Rose. Staff also recommends approving the long range concept plan proposed. And that's all the comments I have. All right. And uh, Dan, I saw your hand go up. Did you have any more that you wanted to add? Mm-hmm. Okay. So early. Okay. <laughs> early, early, not late. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other, uh, anything else you'd like to add? All right. Then we're going to go on to our last application, uh, and that is Corey and Larissa Ertmer from Beloit, Wisconsin. Uh, they have made application uh, for conditional use in accordance with sections 58, 236, parent 17, and 58 454 parent 27 of the Washier County uh, zoning code to store a 2001 Westfield 29 foot travel trailer in the AG general agricultural zone. The location a 10 acre parcel of land known as lot one of certified survey map number 3646 and being a part of the northwest quarter of the northwest quarter of section 34 uh, T 18 N R 8 E, Town of Coloma, 4th <laughs> Avenue. All right, and if you'd like to step up to the microphone, uh, just state your name and let us know a little bit about this application, please. My name is Larissa Ertmer. You can bring that it down. That does slides. Larissa Ertmer. Okay. And we would like to keep our camper on the land, not necessarily permanently. We want to, we store it in the winter. We just want to be able to do work on the land to better it and to groom it so that eventually we can build either a house. Well, first, we want to start with a garage so we can store snowmobiles and things like that and be able to do more maintenance on the property to groom it. We live two hours away, so having a two-hour drive coming up and doing you know, planting trees or, you know, taking trees down or tilling the land. We can't do that in a timely fashion with having to spend four hours with traveling. So having our camper there while we look and see where we would like to build or, you know, whatnot in the future would benefit us. So, but we wanted to apply for this so that if there was anyone opposed to it, neighbors or whatnot, that it would be out on the table and we would follow the procedure. So. Thank you. Any questions? Um, questions about the, um, I, you know the terminology better than I do because you own one. Yeah. But wastewater, how are you going to do with that? And I noticed you didn't have a, a like a porta potty out there. No, no, we do have a, it's from Reliance, and it's a flushable chemical, I guess, a chemical toilet, I guess they're called. It's a little portable toilet. Um, we have that. Um, but we do plan on, if, we, if we're able to do this, we do plan on using the camper 
there's a couple of campgrounds that will allow you to <coughs> dispose of waste, both black water and gray, gray. water. Yep. Thank you. And what we've d always done before, um, when we've gone to a campground, is you empty your black water first, and then you empty your gray water, so that way it supposedly cleans. <laughs> you don't need the details. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, but I knew that the gray water question was going to come up too. So. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's it's the same concern, you know, because, uh, um, and uh, it, as Pat noted, I, I own a camper, been to campgrounds, and I know when you get in an emergent situation where it's either you or the gray water, the gray water ends up on the ground often. And so we always want to make sure that everybody has a contingency plan and understands that you just can't dump that stuff out. You know, it's not good for the environment and it's not obviously uh, the way that needs to be disposed of. So um, just always want to make sure that people are aware of that, you know, that th there needs to be a plan to, to get rid of that. Mm -hmm. so. That's good. Any other questions? I know uh, that there was a uh, concern that, I, I, that's, is that included in correspondence from Town of Um There is a, something about the driveway and the, okay. about the location of the driveway. Okay, but just for the record, I as long as you're standing here, we, we did walk uh, the road. Um, we're aware of the, the Town of Columbus concerns, which will also be addressed for the record in a little bit, about the location of the driveway. Um, uh, I do not believe, unless anyone wants to speak differently, that there wasn't a huge concern of where that driveway was located, and especially with the speeds that are supposed to be maintained on that road. Um, it's close to those two. 45. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So no, it's a it, it's a it's a rural road. Uh, so any road without paint, like a center line and side fog lines, speeds are supposed to be maintained at no faster than 45, unless otherwise posted. Um, so, uh, yeah, so as far as uh, from our, a committee standpoint, we did take that into consideration and did take a look at it and walked the road and, and, and looked at um, the other possible options, and there really wasn't any. So, yeah. and I think I even mentioned to you about cutting back that brush on the hedgeway, so I can yeah. see what it does. Which we'll be doing this weekend, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there you go. And our, our drive. Mm -hmm. right. Not backing well, out. And you did have a turnaround area up right. there too. So. And that will all be addressed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. All right. Anything else from the committee? <laughs> all right. You can have a seat then. Yeah. Um, and then correspondence? Um, we do have the only correspondence of the night. On August 15th, 2019, we received a call from Mark Kirshner, the town chairman for Coloma. He indicated the township is not opposed to the request to store the travel trailer on the vacant parcel. However, the town board voiced concerns over the location of the new driveway at the base of the hill. They would like the Planning and Zoning Committee to review the location of the existing driveway for any potential safety concerns. They would also like to see the travel trailer screened from view and located on the lot accordingly. Uh, anyone to speak in favor? No one in favor. Objecting? No. Information only? No one for information. Staff comments. The applicants are requesting a conditional use to store a 2001 Westfield 29-foot travel trailer on a 10-acre parcel of land in the AG zone in the town of Coloma. The subject property is a redivision of egg lands that were subdivided into nearly four equally sized lots in 1997 along the east side of 4th Ave. The applicants own two parcels, lots one and two. The committee has visited the property and noted that the travel trailer meets the 100 foot setback from all lot lines. However, it is visible from the clearance made for the driveway and could be moved to the north. A fire number will need to be assigned. A gravel turnaround is present for vehicles to turn around. Driveway location was assessed and vegetation can be re removed near the road to improve visibility when entering the roadway. 
Based upon the proposed photos, the subject travel trailer appears to be well maintained. If the travel trailer is set back far enough from the roadway and tucked behind the existing vegetation to screen the trailer from adjoining properties, storage of the travel trailer would be an un unobtrusive neighbor and would in no way negatively impact surrounding land uses. Staff has reviewed this request and believes that storage of the proposed travel trailer on this property with conditions should not negatively impact the surrounding land uses. While the committee will be making a formal recommendation on this request later in the evening, staff recommends approval of the conditional use request to store a 2001 Westfield 29-foot travel trailer on a 10-acre parcel of land in the egg zone in the town of Coloma. Do you wish to add anything? No. Okay. All right. So that's going to conclude the uh, uh, public portion of our hearing. And so. I'm just going to turn the camera off. So we'll just wait for Cindy for two seconds. All right. We'll wait two seconds. 